Praise the Lord again. Blessings and greetings we bring to you in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for being with us again today on this Triumph Tuesday. This is 10-minute midday manna brought to you by Triumph Church Roanoke. And we just come to be a blessing to you on your lunch hour on today. So they want to continue looking at Ecclesiastes. We want to look at the latter part of Ecclesiastes chapter number 2. And I uh, hear what the wisdom of the word has for us today. Amen. Amen. Again, we thank you for being with us on today. Amen. Um, we're coming to you again from Triumph Church. Roanoke. Our information is at the bottom of your screen. Connect with us. Uh, on all of our social media platforms and you can uh, join like subscribe however it's uh, stated in your platform and uh, we'll be happy amen to be a blessing in your life with the word of God as often as the Lord see fits for it to to go amen today we're looking at uh, Ecclesiastes chapter number two uh, I think we did this last week and uh, continuing to the latter part of Chapter two, amen. Uh, looking at the words, as I said, the words of the preacher, amen. So in verse number 12, looking at Ecclesiastes chapter two, verses 12 through 26, he says, so I turn to consider wisdom and madness and folly for what can the man do who comes after the king? Only what has already been done. Then I saw that there is more gain in wisdom than in folly, as there is more gain in light than in darkness. The wise person has his eyes in his head, but the fool walks in darkness. And yet I perceive that the same event happens to all of them. Then I said in my heart, what happens to the fool will happen to me also. Why then have I been so very wise? And I said in my heart, that this also is vanity. For as the wise, uh, for of the wise, as of the fool, there is no enduring remembrance, seeing that in the days to come all will have been long forgotten. How the wise dies just like the fool. Excuse me. All right. So I hated life, because what is done under the sun was grievous to me. For all this vanity and a striving after wind. I hated all my toil in which I toiled under the sun, seeing that I must leave it to the man who will come after me. And who knows whether he will be wise or a fool, yet he will be master of all for which I toiled and used my wisdom under the sun. This also is vanity. So I turned about and gave my heart up to despair over all the toil of my labors under the sun. Because sometimes a person who has toiled with wisdom and knowledge and skill must leave everything to be enjoyed by someone who did not toil for it. This also is vanity and a great evil. What has a man from all the toil and striving of heart with which he toils beneath the sun? For all his days are full of sorrow and his work is a vexation. Even in the night, his heart does not rest. This also is vanity. There is nothing better for a person than that he should eat and drink and find enjoyment in his toil. This also, I saw, is from the hand of God. For apart from him who can eat or who can have enjoyment. For to the one who pleases him, God has given wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner... He has given the business of gathering and collecting only to give to one who pleases God. This also is vanity and striving after when we, uh, we look at this and we look at uh, the wisdom that is contained here, talking about the things that uh, are of a great consequence. But yet in the end, he uses the word vanity to just end up being nothing. Um, he said, yet yeah, truly. He does make the statement that it's more is better to be wise than a fool. And he makes it as light and dark. So it's, it's, it's not even close. 
Um, but, you know, he's not denying that. But in the end, if you're wise or if you're a fool in terms of uh, what happens, both of you die the same. Your work goes to somebody else. And he said that's vanity and a great evil. Meaning, and, and putting it into into a mindset, we work and, and our experiences are different, but we work and we we gather, we earn, we buy things up. We have all these assets that we accrue. Some uh, accumulate, some don't. We're trying to learn as uh, even more so as African-American community, but everybody, um, the value of equity, the value of uh, appreciating assets rather than depreciation assets, a house over a car. You know, uh, a true collector's item over just something you're going to wear and wear out. And so we're learning those things. But even in all of that, when we attain those assets, when we attain those um, houses and cars and, and, and whatever, stocks, bonds, you know, everybody talking about investing Bitcoin and all this stuff so that your money can grow and things of that nature. At the end of the day and at the end of your life, what happens to it? You can no longer enjoy it. Uh, you get, it has to go somewhere. If you don't specify somewhere to go, and uh, my brother, uh, Bishop Terrell Travis, can tell you all about that, that um, at his law firm. But um, if if you uh, don't specify a place uh, where it can go, um, it's going to go somewhere. It's just not going to sit. Eventually, the government will take it over and things of that nature. If you don't make the final payments on it, they'll auction it off to the, to the highest bidder, which may be pennies on the dollar sometimes. But And things that are value of you may not be value to somebody else. But you're hoping that um, you can get enjoyment out of it. Um, that's, that's a little bit ahead. Let me go back. Um, so we work and gather all these things. From us, uh, coming out of Jim Crow and to sharecropping and to civil rights and, and, and things, you, you start to build up and they bomb Oklahoma and they, they you build your neighborhoods and they 581 just guts right through the middle of Roanoke and tears it out and they, t they steal your name of Big Lick and make it, the, uh, make it the city name and not the African American part that they told us we could have and just stole that because it was growing so fast. And they recognized the value of our dollar. And so they said, let us absorb that into our economy because um, it was a separate economy. And, you know, money would cause a lot of things. We built all that, but man can destroy it. We built all that. But when we die, somebody else is going to get it. You build a relationship with your wife and then all of a sudden, nothing. You just spent years of, of, of doing things and then you pass on and. Somebody else do it. Or you get divorced and half of it's gone. You didn't built the house and you can't have it no more. Vanity. Things you have worked and toiled for can be gone in a minute. Um, you know, just that fast. All it takes is from one person to decide it's not going to be yours anymore. All it takes for death to decide that you got to give it up. And so... Uh, you hope that there be things left. Yes, we hope we build equity in houses so that when we pass, um, we can leave something of value to somebody. I remember talking to my grandmother one time uh, about her house and how much her payment was and things of that nature. And I was like, oh, my God. But she left something of, of you know, when her, my mother, grandmother, my grandfather uh, left something of greater value, but still, all that toil, uh, somebody else had to take it over. And you, you, you're trusting that they're going to be wise with it. They're going to do the right thing and, and make sure it maintains whatever value or cash out the value or whatever. But it's still a blessing that toil, but still is not something for you to enjoy. So in, I got to wind it up. Um, but in there, he's talking about how the best thing is to enjoy your toil while you're living. And I've heard that from preachers who spent years in the ministry and, and as older preachers leaving a legacy to younger preachers to take over work, they tell them, enjoy life. You know, this is important, but make sure you take time to enjoy life and take care of your family, things of that nature. Cause it's real easy to feel like you got to do all this work and, and you do. But you got to make sure your, your stress levels, your cortisol and all that stuff is in check. And um, 
be sure you're taking care of things because at the end you need to have a work that you can present to God, but you also got to know that somebody has got to come along and continue the work. And you pray that it still stands as the generations go by that you have a hundred year anniversaries that you have all these things that is continuing and the work continues to go on. But we all got to go to a point where we got to give it up and our work has to just speak for us. But then again, he says as well, it's soon forgotten. It's, it's forgotten after a while. There's a generation that hadn't been touched by the naming of you or, or even touched by you that that will not remember you, save a few. Uh, and so live for God. Only what you do with Christ, for Christ will last because they earn an eternal reward. Um, but on earth, understand that uh, vanity of vanities, all is vanity, says the preacher make sure you're taking care of the real thing the thing that matters amen that's my time i probably went over a little bit longer but i thank god for you thank god for you being with us today and praying that uh we continue to be a blessing to you if anywhere within uh comfortable driving range of venton the roanoke valley come see about us we're open social distance and you can let us know you're coming and we'll make sure we take care of you and keep you safe as as CDC guidelines require with masks and six feet of social distance and uh, not sharing things and things of that nature. We have a mostly vaccinated congregation. And so we uh, are praising the Lord. Amen. While we are uh, here in the time that God allowed us. God bless you. I need to stop. Heaven smile upon you is my prayer in Jesus name. Have a blessed day.